After the terror attacks in Moscow, the legacy media immediately denied the possibility of Ukrainian involvement. After the US sent a warning that it would happen, and then bizarre condolences after it happened, are any of us absolutely certain that this couldn't involve Ukrainian deep state forces and even the CIA? I mean, have they done anything like this before? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on our voyage to truth and freedom. Click the link in the description to join our movement as we grow together and oppose the establishment forces that try to dominate our consciousness with lies, deceptions, distractions, and stories such as today's, which, of course, no one conclusively say is in any way dubious. But if you consider that this attack has already been claimed by ISIS, and then you look at the origins of ISIS, there's already a fascinating story to be told because guess who funds ISIS and significantly contributed to its creation? President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS. First of all, it's bizarre, isn't it, now that these world war stories are starting to collide like a Marvel franchise movie ultimately coalescing in Avengers Endgames. We're getting protagonists from previous wars turning up in new ones. I mean, ISIS, I thought ISIS was over. Somehow Palpatine returned. But here ISIS are, doing terror attacks in Moscow while the United States and NATO are still at least tangentially involved in peculiar forces fighting within Ukraine. It's odd. Also, you have the extraordinary phenomena of the US sending condolences and simultaneously sending cluster bombs. I mean, have a look at these steals. Firstly, there's Blinken condemns heinous Moscow attack and stands with the people of Russia. Poor people of Russia attacked by ISIS. US strongly condemns deadly terrorist attack in Russia sends deepest condolences. Also, US sending Ukraine more cluster bombs as part of a new $300 million arms package. Just to remind you that the use of cluster bombs has been previously regarded as a war crime. When Russians do it, seems to be okay the other way around though. And the reason they're particularly insidious as a combat tool is because cluster bombs can lay dormant for generations and then explode underneath, like, for example, innocent children. Let's have a look at how the legacy media is reporting on these Moscow terror attacks. Let's look at who has claimed responsibility for it, how that group is funded, and whether or not imperialist interests are in any way involved in this terror attack, and how come the legacy media was so quick to say, this was definitely ISIS, Ukraine are not involved. Of course, so far, over 100 130 people are dead and many people are injured. So ultimately, of course, whoever committed this atrocity, it is a tragic event and exposes, in a sense, the ridiculousness of war, where I think half a million Ukrainian troops have died. I don't know how many Russian troops have lost their lives. I don't know how many more people will yet lose their lives because of this war. And why are we discussing which types of violence warrant condolences and which types of violence warrant further funding? Let's have a look at the legacy media's reporting. Investigators surveying the smoldering wreckage of the aftermath of the weekend massacre near Moscow. The full extent of the horror quickly made clear by a growing line of body bags. The attack comes after the U.S. shared intelligence with Russia, warning that ISIS was planning to strike and advising its citizens to stay away from concert venues. Some people see that as an indication of involvement. That is, of course, impossible to verify, but is also an indication of our total lack of trust in institutions of government and the media. And you can, of course, underwrite that lack of trust by pointing out, for example, the New York Times's involvement in the story around the 10 to 12 CIA bases that have been in Ukraine for the last 10 years, which they didn't report on until the CIA facilitated that reporting because it was convenient to get Republicans Republicans on board to sign off more arms shipments to Ukraine. So people being cynical when they hear something like that, it's not like, oh no, you're so cynical about everything. Why don't you just believe what you're told? That's sort of, it could be argued, the correct condition to greet official information with. Earlier this week, President Vladimir Putin dismissed the US warning as outright blackmail, but today he was seen leading his country in mourning. And despite the fact that ISIS has claimed responsibility, he used the opportunity to bolster support for his war in Ukraine, now entering its third year. It would be naive, foolish even, to without question believe the perspective of Vladimir Putin and Russian propaganda. Of course, there's such a thing as Russian propaganda and a Russian agenda and Russian war crime. So let's have a look at some reporting, which extraordinarily comes from the far left. It's a socialist news organization, and they help us to understand some 
some of the ethnic complexity within Russia, former Russian imperialist projects that have left them vulnerable to an attack like this, the possibility that former occupants of Soviet territories are now working out of Ukraine, the complex nature of Ukrainian fighting forces, which you know, of course, includes Nazi battalions. And what fascinates me is the legacy media's willingness to immediately say, this is definitely ISIS, it is only ISIS, in much the same way that when the Nord Stream pipeline blew up, they went, this was Russia that did this, this was definitely Russia. And even in the event where this is ISIS, ISIS-K specifically, the funding and foundation of ISIS is a story that, of course, involves the United States of America, the CIA, and extraordinary interventionism. He's the founder. Friday's terror attack at Crocus City Hall in Moscow, which killed at least 137 people and wounded over 180, is a dangerous new stage in the imperialist war against Russia. According to Russia's President Vladimir Putin, the perpetrators were captured on their way to the Ukrainian border, where a window had been prepared for them to cross into Ukraine. The four main suspects were identified as immigrants from Tajikistan, a desperately impoverished former Soviet republic in Central Asia. They have pleaded guilty and claim to have acted on behalf of as yet unidentified intermediaries for money. Even that sentence suggests there could be a degree of complexities for the origins and funding of this travesty. The Afghan-based Islamist terrorist group ISIS-K has claimed responsibility for the attack. The principal mouthpieces of US imperialism, the New York Times and the Washington Post, have promptly initiated a campaign to deny the involvement of the US and Ukraine in this attack. Both outlets immediately dismissed Putin's statement about a connection to Ukraine, citing unnamed US security officials. Without providing any evidence, they simply echoed the claims of the White House in Kiev, made almost as soon as the attack occurred, that neither the US nor Ukraine were involved. Whether or not the US or Ukraine were involved is not a claim that anybody's in a position to make right now. But similarly, no one can make the claim that they were not involved. And so far, we know that there was an advance warning from the US that potentially it fits the US-Ukrainian agenda. And it's extraordinary that the legacy media were so willing to immediately report, much in the same way that they were with the Nord Stream pipeline, that there was nothing to see here. Okay, folks, show's over. Nothing to see here. Show's... Oh my God! A horrible plane crash! Hey, everybody, get a load of this flaming wreckage. Come on, crowd around. Crowd around, don't be shy, crowd around. How is it possible for the major US media outlets to immediately exclude any connection between this attack and a war raging between Russia and Ukraine with significant US involvement? In fact, their claims have no more credibility than their earlier denial of US and Ukrainian involvement in the bombing of the US-Russian Nord Stream gas pipeline. There have been many instances where US denials of culpability later proved to be false. This places the burden of proof on them to prove their innocence. The attack has the mark of the CIA and its proxies in Kiev all over it. We can't continue to bring you this glorious content without the support of our partners. And what great partners they are today. Debt. It keeps you tossing and turning at night. You can't get away from it. But the truth is the system is designed to trap you in perennial debt. Insanely high interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. But thankfully, there's a new way out of the debt trap. Pivotal Debt Solutions. Pivotal Debt Solutions isn't like the old school debt relief companies that string your debt out for years. They have new new aggressive strategies that can end your debt faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Pivotal Debt Solutions can cut or even eliminate interest, find programs to write off your balances so you owe less, stop those threatening phone calls without bankruptcy and without a loan. The bottom line is they find every solution possible to end your debt permanently. Before you do anything, contact Pivotal Debt Solutions first. Talk to them for free. Find out how fast they can help you get out of debt. Visit zapmydebt.com. That's zapmydebt.com. Okay, let's get back to the content. The war propaganda in the media about the terrorist attack reveals its political purpose. The Times wrote with barely concealed glee that the attack was a blow to Mr. Putin's aura as a leader for whom national security is paramount. Now the Times surmises Russians might ask whether Mr. Putin with the invasion and his conflict with the West truly has the country's security interests at heart or whether he is woefully forsaking them as many of his opponents say he is. That I suppose provides motive that this attack could be beneficial in destabilizing Russia in the same way that we continually hear that there are Russian agencies and Chinese and Iranian agencies hacking into our social media sites in order to destabilize our nations by placing fake stories. Also it would be naive not to consider the ideology of this news source that we're getting this from. It's obviously a leftist and socialist publication that have their own 
biases. That's why I believe that we should look at a variety of sources of information and try our best as individuals, as communities and people interested in free speech, free thought and freedom generally to arrive at conclusions independently. Taking an almost identical line, the Washington Post published a piece under the headline Terrorist Attack in Russia Exposes Vulnerabilities of Putin's Regime. It gloated that the attack smashed through Putin's efforts to present Russia as strong, united and resilient and quoted a Moscow businessman criticising the lack of responsibility for security at large public events under Putin. A Moscow businessman? That's not a good enough source, is it, for a terrorist attack? They want a little bit more than that. What's his name and what's his business? I don't know. He had a suit and tie on. He had a Russian accent. Look, we're very busy at the New York Times. Can't go writing down everything we learn. It's already weird enough that the condolences from Antony Blinken are offered alongside cluster bombs to Ukraine. But the fact that these are sort of snidey, bastard condolences that are immediately followed up with propagandist attacks. We're so sorry for that terrorist attack that it exposes you as a little bit weak. You'd never do that to an individual, would you? So sorry that your dad died. Also, might want to buy a guard dog. Your house could get burgled now. It clearly serves a kind of propagandist purpose, even if it's opportunistic rather than instigated and enacted by deep state CIA forces working with Ukraine, for example, or even by ISIS-K that are funded and facilitated by the CIA. I mean, how many times have you heard stories about the FBI getting people together going, listen, wouldn't it be good to do a terrorist attack? Here's some money for the terrorist attack. You're under arrest for a terrorist attack. There is no reason for us not to speculate, is there? We're attacked even for this type of conjecture, even though within this conjecture, there is a good deal of reason. It's a good way to attack Putin. It suits their overall agenda. You can tell from the timbre of their reporting that they're sort of happy that it's happened. They do things like this all of the time. The CIA are already in Ukraine. There's legitimate reason for concern, isn't there? The same line was taken in the Financial Times, which declared that Russian allegations of Ukrainian responsibility served to deflect attention from gaps in Moscow security system, which have widened since Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine two years ago. These condolences are starting to wear thin. We're so sorry. It's so terrible that you've gone through this. Exposes a lot of weaknesses in your defense system, doesn't it? But here, here's some flowers. We were told that the Ukrainian counteroffensive last spring was going to be successful. The only reason that we know that it was not going to be successful, and in fact, Ukrainian forces were, to use an idiom, on their asses, was because Jack Peshera, a whistleblower, revealed caches of information on a bunch of chat sites that showed that Ukrainian forces were struggling, that privately American deep state forces and military forces were admitting this was an unwinnable war. So, of course, we're going to be cynical about the line that emerges in the legacy media and the official stance of the US military stroke military industrial complex. This is at least opportunistic and at worst potentially involves the deep state. But it's difficult to imagine that it doesn't because ISIS came about as a result of one, the phony invasion of Iraq looking for weapons of mass destruction, the involvement of the US training opponents of the then Soviet Union in Afghanistan. The CIA are all over stuff like this because they're always funding insurgent groups in order to support whatever their agenda is at that time. Then their agenda changes and they say, oh, they're a nuisance now, they're terrorists. So it's not mad to investigate this stuff. And the New York Times are saying, well, this is clearly ISIS and there's no need to investigate further. The New York Times were involved in the actual arrest of Jack Teixeira. They passed on information to the CIA, to the FBI. They participated in his actual arrest. And their relationship with the CIA when it came to those bases in Ukraine was similarly entwined. So you cannot trust the legacy media, full stop, and you have to investigate all sides of this story. It's quite possible obviously, that Putin's saying, oh, Ukraine are involved because of his own agenda, but it's equally possible that the New York Times are lying to meet the agenda of the establishment of which they are a part. The claim that Putin was distracted by the Ukraine war does not refute US-Ukrainian involvement in the attack. Rather, it might have been a factor that led NATO plotters to believe that an attack had a high probability of success. Central to the imperialist propaganda about the supposed non-involvement of the US and Ukraine is the fact that ISIS-K has claimed responsibility for the attack. But the involvement of ISIS-K would not dis prove Ukrainian and US involvement. On the contrary, ISIS-K is largely a creation of US imperialism and its decades-long wars in the Middle East and Central Asia. In 2021, the Wall Street Journal reported that US-trained intelligence agents and elite counterinsurgency troops were joining ISIS-K in Afghanistan. Tajikistan, from where the suspected terrorists hail, has long been entangled in the armed conflicts in Afghanistan, going back to the 1980s when the US trained and funded Islamist fundamentalists in its wars against the Soviet Union. So there's so much enmeshment and funding and training and confusion around this. I would say the co-founder would be Crooked Hillary 
Clinton. I mean, we know that they accepted funding from groups that also fund ISIS, or nations in the case of Saudi Arabia. So geopolitics is more complicated than the New York Times is ever going to tell you, or any legacy media outlet ever going to tell you. And that's why Julian Assange is still being held in prison under extraordinary circumstances, because he revealed just caches of information about what actually happens in these conflicts that are extremely embarrassing to very, very powerful forces. Even in the simplest, least tangential and conjecture-laden version of this, you, the US taxpayer, funded it because you participated through your CIA and deep state in the establishment of ISIS in the first place. Even if there's been no recent CIA or Ukrainian involvement, you would have no ISIS without the wanton expenditure of US tax dollars on interventionist wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. So even in the most vanilla version, ISIS is a CIA and American tax dollar creation. Astonishing. In this context, the March 7th warnings by the US Embassy in Moscow of an impending major terrorist attack in Russia can only be interpreted as an attempt to create an alibi for the US in the lead up to the operation of its proxies. The involvement of Ukrainian intelligence, which coordinates its day-to-day operations closely with NATO and the US, is also all but evident. In January 2023, the Times reported that nationalist and far-right elements from across the former Soviet Union, including Russia's North Caucasus and Central Asia, had flocked to Ukraine to fight in NATO's war against Russia. As the Times wrote, most of them harbour long-term political ambitions to return home and overthrow the Russian and Belarusian governments. The volunteers themselves say that they are acting with the full knowledge and under the orders of the Ukrainian army and intelligence services. Many of their operations are covert, including dangerous reconnaissance or sabotage missions behind Russian lines. That's the Times' reporting that suggests that because of, you know, Russia do have a version of imperialism, do have their own, inverted commas, domestic enemies. So that's further evidence that there's some connection between deep state forces, either Ukrainian or US, and these attacks. And I suppose because of the constant meddling and unleashing of wild forces in an irresponsible way. And just days before the Moscow terror attack, the Times hailed Russian neo-Nazis, which were openly backed by Ukraine's military intelligence agency, for an incursion of the country during the presidential elections as rebellious Russians. Daring attacks, the Times wrote, could help undermine the sense of stability in Russia and divert the country's military resources from Ukraine. My newly remembered conspiracy theory analytic is, would they do it? Could they do it? Would you know if they had done it? If you can answer yes to the first two and no to the third, it's worth contemplating. It sounds like it's entirely plausible. It's not beyond their moral remit. And at this point, we wouldn't know for sure anyway. So just accepting what the New York Times has told you would seem to be an unappealing option. The line of argument developed by the Times and rebroadcast in the world's press reveals the political purpose of the terrorist operation. With NATO's proxy forces in Ukraine facing a military debacle, the terror attack in Moscow was part of the efforts to open up a second front in the war with Russia itself. The aim is threefold. First, to embolden opposition to the Putin regime with the oligarchy and state apparatus. Second, to provoke a military response by the Kremlin that can serve as the pretext for a further escalation of the war by NATO. And third, to foster ethnic and religious tensions within Russia that would destabilise the regime and facilitate the carve-up of the entire region by the imperialist powers. That's an extraordinary agenda right there. It opens another front, it escalates the war with NATO, it fosters ethnic and religious tensions within Russia that destabilise the regime. When you recognise that the discourse in your country, my country, often includes insurgent and insurrectionist attempts within our nation purportedly from those nations, it's unlikely, naive in fact, to imagine that the United States and other nations NATO members are not involved in comparable ventures, particularly when we now have the Julian Assange information, the Edward Snowden information, the Jack Teixeira information. We know that there are all manner of projects of war and provocation that we are funding and are never told about. While over 70% of Russia's population of about 140 million are ethnic Russians, the country is home to over 190 ethnic groups. Muslims comprise at least a tenth of the population. Many of them live in a few largely Muslim republics as well as in the North Caucasus, where the Kremlin has waged two brutal wars against Chechen separatists between 1994 and 2009. In addition, there are some 17 million immigrants living in Russia who mostly come from former Soviet republics such as Tajikistan and belong to the most exploited sections 
sections of the working class. The social basis and politics of the oligarchic Putin regime make it highly vulnerable to the machinations of the imperialist powers. Its invocation of the great Russian chauvinism and nationalism serves to disorientate, divide and demobilise the working class and ultimately aids the imperialist war aims. So ultimately this uh, publication isn't pro-Putin either, describing him as an oligarch and an enemy to the working class that this uh, publication plainly supports. There is a real danger that the Putin regime and other right-wing forces will try to direct the popular shock toward the targeting of different national and ethnic communities while stepping up state repression. Already on Saturday, Moscow police launched raids of immigrant living quarters and social media reports indicated a developing boycott of predominantly Tajik cab drivers. The Moscow terrorist attack is a dangerous and criminal escalation of a war that has already claimed hundreds of thousands of lives. The recklessness of the imperialist powers is staggering. While backing the cold-blooded genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza by Israel, they are encouraging violent national and ethnic conflicts in Russia and risk the deployment of nuclear weapons by the Putin regime. When you look at this story, the condolences and the cluster bombs, the people of Russia suffering too under a corrupt regime, Putin's corrupt regime. When you notice the involvement of forces that are either historically created by the US taxpayers, hard-earned money redirected by deep state duplicity, or whether it's the more recent engagement by deep state forces in provocation inside Russia and from within Ukraine, you start to recognise that we've created a really complicated, baffling and unpleasant world. And that there's such requirement for re- form and an honest reckoning and reorganisation of the principles of government at the national and global level. That to be caught up in either frivolous, superfluous, sensationalist stories or to be bound up in the uni-party debates about Republicans versus Democrats is a kind of waste of time. As mentioned here, we do stand on the precipice of potential nuclear war and what's plain is that there's a lack of moral clarity throughout this conflict. Funding continues, diplomacy disrupted, potential for nuclear war ignored, potential that conflicts past of rising like zombies from the grave to continue and exacerbate conditions in this war. Don't you recognise now, as I'm starting to, the necessity for a real evaluation on how global business is conducted. Something as pastoral and simple as American nativism. And by that, I don't mean any form of racism or bigotry, just the idea that America will go, do you know what? We're going to withdraw from all international conflicts, focus on this country, Part of that is going to be we're going to really keep an eye on our borders, particularly only allowing legal and formal migration. But part of the pact is we are not going to dabble through war or commerce in the business of other nations. And where that intercedes and interrupts the interests of global corporations, like for example, Apple or Amazon, we'll just have to accept that. And where that disables and disrupts the military industrial complex in order to favour ordinary Americans, we're just going to do that. We're going to focus on America. And wouldn't the UK be better off focusing on our domestic problems and supporting our our farmers and making our nation fully autonomous and fully independent isn't nativism and a divestment of global power the only answer because you can see that just in a 20 30 year period with the Iraq Afghanistan and now this conflict there's a real vipers nest of complexity unfolding that could very easily lead to World War three and the annihilation of all of us, just because it's such a bloody mess that involves so much lies and so much treachery. So shouldn't we, like, just (laughs) withdraw from this war and stop funding it, demand a peaceful solution, stop funding the escalation of events in the Middle East, come to some sort of arrangement with China and focus on the many evident and obvious problems in our own countries? I think we should, but that is, of course, just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these. Remember, click that button and become a member of our community to get access to additional videos for the next month uh, you can have one month free to decide whether or not you want to join us you can cancel at any time there's a link in the description if you want to take advantage of that offer more important than any of that if you can please stay free hey thanks for watching if you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish join our live stream click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement download the rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content stay free